Good morning. This is Black Crow Walking coming to you from Australia. <clears throat> I'm bringing you a study of A Course of Love by Mari Perrin. And today we're up to chapter 12, which is all about the origin of separation. Uh, yesterday we finished at number 8, but I will read number 8 again, verse 8 I mean, uh, in chapter 12. Uh, just to bring you up to speed with where we are, we're at. Uncertainty of any kind is about is doubt about yourself. Uncertainty of any kind is doubt about yourself. This is why this course aims to establish your identity. For from it all the rest will come. As such, this course seems to ask for change at every level. And yet, from one change alone will all the others follow. And through no effort on in on your part at all, and through no effort on your part at all. So there you go. That's good news, isn't it? And even this one change is not a change at all. For it is merely for it merely seeks to remove all the changes you but think you have made to God's creation. Thus change seeks to be restored. Change seeks to restore you to yourself. Well, isn't that interesting? And I don't even remember those words from yesterday. So in one ear, out the other. But it eventually sinks in. I'm glad I read it again. Your self rests totally unchanged within the Christ in you. Re-establishing your relationship with your brother is what will show yourself to you. You have one brother who wears but many faces. In your perception of who he is, and while you know him not, you cannot know yourself. This one brother can unite you with all whom you perceive as others. For all others are one with him as well as you. This is the one joining that, that needs to occur to bring about all the rest. This is the one disjoining that your choice for separation brought about, and it is but a separation from yourself. This is the most difficult point to get across, because it is, in it lies a contradiction. The one contradiction that has created the world you see and the life you live. Although it is a Although it is impossible for something to have gone wrong in God's creation, something has gone wrong. All you need do is look about you to know that this is so. And rather than be discouraged by this news, you breathe a sigh of relief because you know this to be true and yet have felt as if this is the secret that has been kept from you. It is as if you are told endlessly everything is fine, while you know this to be not true. And everything is is and everything and if if everything is fine, it must just be you who are all wrong. All of creation seems to hum along in perfect harmony. The stars light up the sky. The sun and moon do what they were appointed to do. The animals of the sea, ground and air are all are but what they, their creator bade them be. The mountains stand in all their majesty. The rivers flow. The desert sands come countless in number are blown endlessly about and everything seems to be what it is and what it has always been but for perhaps the mark of man upon it yet 
The moon remains the moon despite man's landing on it. The earth remains the earth despite your highways, roads and bridges. And somewhere you know not. Peace remains peace despite your wars. And happiness remains happiness despite your despair. Mm, I wonder what they're really saying here. Okay. Let's go back and have a look at it. Yourself rests totally unchanged within the Christ in you. Your Christed self. What they mean by that is this formless being that's looking out from behind your eyes and watching you thinking, watching you go about your day from within. And that's why they always say, go within. That's where the journey is. Re-establishing your relationship with your brother, everybody, everything, is what will show yourself to you. Isn't that interesting? Everything is a mirror, a reflection of ourselves, and that's what we attract to ourselves. It's like a magnet. If you're working on anger, you're going to attract angry people or angry situations. So look at your brother and your sisters. Look at, look at everybody that comes into your life as a reflection of who you are. You have one brother who wears but many faces. Everyone. We're talking about everyone. But many, f you have one brother who wears but many faces in your perception of who he is, and while you know him not, you cannot know yourself. Yeah, I, I've met people in this lifetime that say they don't like human beings, and I don't think they like themselves very much. It's a statement about them. But if you are with the intention to love everybody without all this judgment that we want to place on everything. Just let them be. Mind your own business about what they're doing. It's, it's their growth, not yours. And it doesn't need, a for, need for us to have an opinion about it even. We can just, oh, is that what you're doing now? Okay, that's what you're doing now. And... That's part of their growth. This one brother can unite with you, with all whom you perceive as others. For all others are one with him as well as you. This is the one joining, the need to occur to bring about all rest. And so there it, there it is. There's the truth. We are all one. This formless energy is in everything. It is the love energy. And that love energy is just delicious. It's everywhere. And it's who you are, beloved. And it's in everybody. So as you move about this planet and you start to see this love in everyone, whether you call it Christ consciousness or God or... or collective consciousness or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. It is all love. And that love, when you really go inwards and find it, it's delicious. And it fills your whole being and it cannot be contained within you. And it spills out everywhere, in everything and everyone. And we are simply a vessel, an expression of that on the earth. So if you can see everybody as an expression of love, whether they've gotten stuck in their 
unconscious personality or not, then change can happen. And that's what this is about today. This is the one disjoining that your choice for separation brought about. When you chose to separate yourself into an identity, a personality, a have to or want to be, And that separation caused the disjoining from everybody else. But it's just an illusion. It's not who you are. You are still joined to everybody else. You are still one energy experiencing life on for, in form. You're just unconscious of it. Maybe it's time to wake up to that today. This is the most difficult part, point to get across. Because in it lies contradiction. The one contradiction that has created the world you see and the life you live. Although it is impossible for something to have gone wrong in God's creation, something has gone wrong. All you need do is look about you to know that this is so and rather than be discouraged by this news, you breathe a sigh of relief because you know this to be true and yet have felt as if this is the secret that has kept from you, been kept from you. It is as if you, told, you are told endlessly everything is fine while you know this is not true and if everything is fine it must just be who you are. Who you, it must just be, it must just be you who are all wrong. <laughs> there you go. I'll read the next one and then we'll stop for the day. All of creation seems to hum along in perfect harmony. The stars light up the sky, the sun and the moon do what they are pointed to do, and the animals of the sea, ground and air, Ah, but, but what their creator bade them be. The mountains stand in all their majesty. Rivers flow and desert sands countlessly, countless in number are blown endlessly about. Everything seems to be what it is and what it has always been, but for perhaps the mark of man upon it. Yet the moon remains the moon despite man's landing on it. The earth remains the earth, despite your highways and roads and bridges. But somewhere you know not, peace remains peace, despite your wars, and happiness remains happiness, despite your despair. So I think today we look at the illusion the illusion that of our separateness once more because everything is, is as it was created even you you are as you're created the only thing that is different in your perception or your judgment of yourself is your unconscious thinking Unconscious thinking, what would it mean for you to suddenly be conscious? Well, it might mean that you notice that you're drinking a cup of tea. It might mean that you are aware when you're driving. It might mean that you start your day with the intention to be happiness, peace and freedom, which is your natural state. And it might mean that you bring that into every part of your day. Wow, wouldn't that be exciting? So you would go to work with that attitude of play, happiness, peace, freedom, play, adventure. And everything around you will be affected as you move through your day with the perfection of love. Being conscious means going inwards in your journey and allowing what is inside you free expression of love in all that you do. 
I love you. Have an awesome day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.